our toy store is getting pretty close to being completed. If you've been following along, you know that we've built it from, from just sheets of plywood up to a building. We've finished it inside and out, and we've worked on the sidewalk on two sides. This week, join me as we finish off the other two sides with a dirt alley and install the exterior lights, and who knows, maybe we'll get some other finishing touches done too. Stay tuned and find out how far we get. step in making this look like dirt is to get rid of the plywood look. So for that we only need two things. We need some dark brown paint and I picked, or darkish brown paint, I picked um, espresso out of my box of paints and a paintbrush. Really the only trick to this is to make sure that we stay off of our, si our edging and off of the building. But we want to cover this plywood up and the tape wire pretty well. We don't want to take a chance on that uh, plywood showing through. So let me finish painting this and then we can start with the fun stuff like getting that light post ready to go in and then getting ready to add some dirt. All right, On the alley side that we're working on this week I want to have a big power pole, big like electrical type pole, big wooden post out there that's as, just about as tall as the building. And it will have a light fixture attached to it. And this is and this is what I'm using. It's a one inch dowel. The only thing I've done ahead is I drilled a hole. This is a three eighths inch dowel that I I drilled a three eighths inch hole. You can see a little bit of cotton there. I wrapped drilled the hole into the big dowel. I wrapped cotton around the end of my small dowel and I saturated both the end of the dowel and the cotton ball with glue, stuck it in here and let it let it dry. Now I've got a handle. Works like a handle. Now I can paint on this. I can finish this the way I want it and then when I'm all done I'll cut this off to just a little bit shorter than the thickness of my landscape board. I'll drill a matching hole in my landscape board and I'll use more cotton and glue it in. I'll show you that when we get that far. I've taken my razor saw, which is this, and I've just kind of made marks. I want this to be an old wood post, old wood pole like you see out in parking lots and alleys and where I live along the road because I live out in, in the middle of nowhere. And these typically age. The side that's protected will be a really, really dark brown, almost black. And the side that's where the light is, where most of the where it gets most of its weathering will be almost white. So I'm starting out, I've got four colors of paint and we're going to start coloring this. And by having this I don't have to get my fingers all dirty and I'll have to find something to set this in when I get all done. I'm going to start with, this is just see, this is ivory, it's a light ivory ceramic coat. And I'm going to paint one side and this can be kind of gloppy. These posts are not smooth. And it won't stay white, don't worry. We're not going to have this completely white when we're all done. It's going to... but we want it to look like it's coming around to a white, almost white side. Get this down where the camera can... where you can kind of see what I'm doing. Now I'm going to go to the back side and this is this is my brown, this is this is brown velvet. This is my darkest brown. I've got, I just went through my paints. I just picked out some browns. I'm going to paint this on this side. And it'll take more than one coat. I'm sure this is going to take more than one coat of paint. But you can kind of get an eye, idea what I'm doing here. And now I'm going to go here. And that's approximately across. Not exactly, but it's okay. Because these poles, in real life, these kind of things are treated with um, like a stuff called creosote, which is kind of an oily, black, dark brown stuff that keeps them, it makes them weather tight. It makes them so they won't rot out right away. 
So I don't want to let these paints dry in between. I want to come in while they're still wet and I want to kind of blend this. Now this one is espresso, I think, this one. I'm using my middle color is kind of an espresso color, it said. I'm coming in around here. And you notice I'm not cleaning my brush in between. I'm just going, now this is autumn brown. This is a really old container of paint. This one's going to be kind of in between. Now I'm going to go back, to, kind of wipe my brush off, go back to the cream color, and I'm going to come up through here. And I'll probably do this two or three times. Now the bottom of the post will be more dark. I'll have the darkest brown coming all the way around actually at the bottom when I'm done. But now I've got this. This is a good start. Now I'll be fiddling with these paints. I want it to look pretty blended so you don't really see a line. I'm, one of my things I need to do, I need to get rid of this line between. I'm going to go back and forth and back and forth. It's already looking pretty close to what I want it to look like. So let me continue to work on this. And when I'm all done, I'll come back and I'll show you how it looks when it's all dry and we're ready to go on to the next step. All right, I've got this all painted and I actually put a coat of a clear um, matte finish on it. Actually, I had satin. I couldn't find my can of matte. I think I emptied it and I didn't want to go to town. So it's got a clear satin finish on it. It's all rough and it's exactly what I wanted. Now I've drilled some holes because I'm going to run an electrical wire up the front of the pole. And in real life, there's usually some kind of a big plastic tube that they run the, um, the electrical up. So I've made a replacement and it's held on by, by big rings. So I took some sir, from the hardware store. Mine, all the ones I had were brass and I didn't want to wait until I could get to town. So I just kind of spray painted them with kind of a silver color. And I've got, pick, I've got holes here. And I'm just going to screw them in. And I may need my pliers. I pre-drilled holes so that I can get those in. If you don't you have a starter hole, it's really hard. And even with a starter hole, sometimes it's not... They don't want to start. So I'm just going to screw these in. And I spaced them along the pole, kind of, sort of, evenly, not exactly evenly. And then I oh, let me get these all in, then I'll show you the next thing I've got. So there's three of them. Fourth one. I've got five holes for these, so I painted five of these. Paint's a little sticky yet. I'm trying to make sure that they are all running flat. Then the next thing I needed to make was I needed to have a way to run the wires from my light fixture down my pole that looked get this screwed the rest of the way in with a pair of pliers. If you're having trouble, by the way, these are really a lot easier to do with pliers than your fingers. Okay. Now I needed something to work as a conduit to run that down. And when I did, Got this. This is two drinking straws. I had, I had bendy straws. I happen to have bought them in two different places, and we always keep our straws in a big plastic tub. And I had two different sizes. So I put them together, and this is just a piece of tape over it. You can see the bendy parts. And I stuck them over a piece of just leftover strip wood and painted them. Painted this all kind of an aluminum color. And now. 
That is going to, you can still see the green on that part of it, that'll have to go towards the pole. It's a little tight where I've got the, that one part, but that's okay. And when I have this all installed on my base, then I'll probably put a drop of glue on one of these. But I want to be able to move it back and forth until I'm to that point. So now let me get this stuff all picked up, and we will start making. I couldn't find a light. I actually picked out a really cool miniature outdoor light, and then it was on back order, and then it disappeared from the store I was looking at it from. So I decided to make one. So I've, I'll get my stuff out that I'm going to make the light fixture with, and then I'll be back. All right, now to start with, I a couple of years ago I bought a big box of miniature stuff. I don't know, garage sale or online. I don't remember where I got it, but I had this humongous box. And in it were these two lamps. They looked just like this, except this one was fine, and the other one was busted right here. So I've had this, I had a half a light fixture floating around in my tools for quite a while. So that's in here. This, the light shade I'm using, is actually the lid off of a Scribbles fabric paint jar. I just drilled a hole to run the wire through and then I used some super glue, some good old Zappa Gap, and glued my light in there. That's all there is to this. This is just a um, a cocktail straw. You know those little skinny straws like you have in drinks or you um, maybe might see it as a coffee stirrer or something like that. It's, that's all this is. This is going to go over my wire. I painted it with silver paint. It looks like I'm, I'm going to have to touch up my paint because I've been messing with it here and it's the paint's kind of coming off. Now I need to go find a toothpick because although I thought I had my toothpicks here, I don't. So let me run and get a toothpick and I'll be right back and we'll finish putting this together. Okay, I'm back and there's some toothpicks. Now the first thing I'm going to do, I've drilled a hole, an additional hole, in my post. So I'm going to put some glue out on my table. I'm just putting a little puddle of fast grab tacky. I'm going to run the end of this and kind of about part way up the the um, toothpick. Rub it fairly thin. And I'm going to put some more Zappa Gap on there. I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to take my light fixture, take my straw. I want the wire already through it. I'm going to force that on there. And now I've got to very quickly pull my wire. Because I want that down. And we now have a light fixture. Now all I have to do is get this wire fed down. I'm gonna I think I'm actually gonna splice some more wire on the end of this. This is why we save the extra wire. I'm actually gonna splice some wire and wrap some tape around it, then I'll feed this down through this straw, and then we'll be ready to install this into our landscape board. So let me get that let me get that stuff done and then I'll be back. Alright, we're working on kind of a tight space. As you can see, I've drilled a hole as close to my plug-in as I can. That's the plug I inserted in tape wire. I've trimmed this, and I ended up just putting the plug on the end. It just barely makes it to where I want it to be. So now I need to reach around, find my glue. We are going to glue the pole into the baseboard. In order to do that, I need to get this covered in glue. This is my thick grab tacky because it'll grab it really well. And I'm kind of saturating the end of the pole and that dowel. 
Now I have part of a cotton ball. I'm going to put that on here. And it's pretty thin. I'm putting on a really thin coat of it. And you know, it's stuck to my fingers. And now more glue. More glue on the outside of that. You don't want much because you want it to still fit in your hole. But by having those fibers there that are saturated with glue, they will really go a long ways towards making this a very permanent bond. And I'm not worried about glue oozing out. Now before anything sets up, I'm also going to reach around here and plug this in. And now everything's set, and now this just needs to dry. And we can start adding the dirt to our base. And I did check my light. It all works. We'll see that later. So that's how we install our power pole. And I will be, there's some something planned for back here for behind, so don't, the plug won't show when I'm all done. So let me get set up and we can start putting dirt in our alley. All right, it's time to put some dirt back here behind the building. To hold my dirt down, I'm just using some matte Mod Podge. I'll, you could probably also use like the dollar store white glues, but I don't have any of those. You, I wouldn't use tacky glue. As much as I love my tacky glue, it's just too thick for this. It won't, it wouldn't work for what I'm doing here. I'm getting my glue down in here, and I may have to put on more than one coat of dirt, and that's okay. We've got to be patient. Kind of fill this in, coating as, as evenly as you can. And this will be easier when I've got this turned around where I can reach it better, but I wanted you to be able to see. And this is just a regular paintbrush. Now here's my tub of dirt. What do I use for dirt? Well, if you watched my snake plant video, you know. I use coffee grounds. Now these are used coffee grounds. When I start running low on dirt, I pick a day when I'm going to be baking quite a bit of polymer clay. I stick the coffee grounds either on a pie plate or even on a paper plate. Put them in that low oven and I bake them right along with my polymer clay. I just leave them in for a half hour, even 20 minutes should get them dry if they're out, spread out thin. Get them really dry, let them cool, and put them in a container. Make sure they're cool and they'll be dried out. I've been doing this for oh, probably 10 or 15 years and I've never had mold problems. The only people I know that have had mold problems didn't dry their coffee grounds. So make sure. There was a pink flower in my coffee. Okay, there we go. And then I just lay them out and put them in a nice thick layer and let that glue dry and this will need to set. You need to let this set. Don't mess with it. Don't push down on it too much. Just let it be. And when the glue is complete, give the glue a couple hours. And when the glue is all dry, you can kind of brush that, that um, extra coffee grounds away. If there's holes in your dirt, put more glue on, more coffee grounds, and layer it. Um, I'm going to turn the camera off and finish putting the dirt around the building and when it's dry I'll be back. Alright my glue is pretty much dry so I've got my tub of stuff, tub of coffee grounds and a brush and I'm just brushing this back brushing over this to get off whatever's not glued on. And because I use Mod Podge I've got fairly good coverage. I've got some spots on the back side that have that are bare and for those I'll just go ahead and spot in some more glue and put some more coffee grounds over it. As you can see, this really does look like dirt. And uh, I need to keep brushing. It'll take a while to get all the loose dirt, loose coffee grounds off of there that aren't glued down, but that's okay. You see, we, we're getting back most of them. We'll just leave a small, thin coat. And there's a place, there's a spot there that's showing through, so I'll have to put some more there. 
But I'll just keep brushing and clearing off the loose coffee grounds. And when I get done with that and get the holes patched, I'll be back. All right, so now it's time to install the light fixture into here. So first let me show you, I have this light. I bought this from, from Hobby Builder Supply. Uh, it's a cute little street light. It's a, I think they call it a Victorian street light. But as you can see, it's not really tall enough. I wanted it taller because this... Let's see. It's not all that tall. It's um, I wanted it to be taller than that, have more presence. So I just took a piece of one inch dowel and I cut it. I kind of estimated how long I wanted it. And the cord originally went through this hole. I'll um, I'll have to figure out what to. I'll fill that when I'm all done here. But I I made this black this piece of one inch doweling and I cut a little divot here for the cord to come out so it'll sit flat and I drilled a hole through it and I painted it all black and now it'll sit nice and flat so and then I added just a plug to the end of the wire now you notice I have a plug actually sitting in my thing here I didn't want to get anything done into my plug I had inserted it in there. That stayed. Come on. There we go. So now we just need to plug this in. I don't have the power hooked up yet, so nothing's going to light up yet. And I need to glue this down. So I think to glue this down, I am actually going to use the same goop cement stuff that I use to put the house down onto the base. That stuff holds really well and I don't want this to come loose. It's like I said earlier though it smells really bad so just be warned you want to do this when you have should probably do this with windows open and you need to put this on both surfaces so usually what I do let me get a wet wipe. Actually what I do when I want to put it on both surfaces on something this small, rather than trying to apply it to both surfaces, I do that. And then I pull it apart a little bit. And look at how much it already wants to grip. Pull it apart and then back together. And now I'm going to let this sit for a second. Well, I clean my fingers up and I am going to put some of this on the bottom and in the bottom of here. And now once this sits down in here and gets dry, this is not going anywhere. Um, so we need to make sure that we are flat, that we are level, and that we are where we want it to be. And I want to turn this way. And I'm not worried about my about my cord because that will be tucked down once the glue is all dry. And I can get in there, then I will tuck that down. And I'll put uh, something over this that looks like it's got dirt in it. And I want to make sure this is centered. So I'm kind of using my fingers. That looks pretty good. And now this just needs to sit until it's nice and dry and then we can start working on getting this so if I'm going to clean off the goop that I got on the outside and yeah that looks pretty whoops I turn my lamp I want to make it so it's going down the street there now I'll let this dry and when it's all dry I'll be back and we'll go to the next step All right, the glue is all dry, and what I've done, I've just cut little pieces of this pink builder's foam, and I'm stuck in here around this. They're not glued in; they're sitting on top. Of, they're just sitting in there. This is in case I ever need to get to that plug. I plug that light in down there. I want to. I maybe I may need to get there someday. I've cut a little piece of paper and I put here. This is just brown cardstock, and what I did, I just took some scrap paper, just like we did to do the wallpapering. You can check that video out if you haven't seen me do the the paper pattern or the 
sidewalk one. I, I think last week I did one when I did the doorway too. And I cut out a piece of brown cardstock. Now this is not going to be easy to get out, but it will be doable. I don't need easy access. I just need emergency access. And it's not perfectly flat, but that's okay. Because now I'm going to get a brush and I'm going to spread glue on this and I'm going to put dirt on it. I'll be right back when I get the brush. Okay, now I've got the brush. And let's see, I need a container. I need to put this out. I don't want to saturate that brown cardstock. I just want to have, whoops, that's way too much. That'll be. And I'm just going to work it in there with my brush. And I'm going to, and just like I did the, the alleyway or any other time I do dirt, I'm going to work this in. It's not going to be, and it'll have a little give. It'll actually probably look really like there's dirt in there because it's not going to be perfectly level. And that's kind of the look I'm going for here. And then if I ever do have to get down in there, I'll just have to replace the um, this cardstock with coffee grounds on it and my um, probably my foam that's down in there too. And don't worry about getting it on the sidewalk. It'll just wipe right off later. As long as there's no wet glue down there, it won't matter. Just be sure you don't have anything sticky that it could stick to. And I'll let that dry, and I'll brush off the excess, and if I need to, I'm, I may have to patch some holes in there, but we'll see when it gets all dry. Alright, so we have the dirt and the light fixtures all put in. And I think that's about all we have time for today. So next week, come back, and we will put some finishing touches around the outside of this building. So I'll talk to you then. Bye.